Good morning again, and this is Off the Press, the newspaper review program, where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it, as much as time will allow us also. I have with me to do so remotely um, an economist, public affairs analyst also, Bolanho Olojide. Good morning, Mr. Olojide. Hey, good morning, Abaka. Thank you for joining us remotely. You seem to be enjoying this remote um, review. We'll have to bring you back post-COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So we have a couple of papers to review this morning, uh, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper. Uh, the Punch newspaper will be our first paper for up for review this morning. Um, just a second, we'll get there. All right. So the Punch newspaper says um, the big story there is already displayed. Uh, federal government refineries earn 3.545 billion naira. NAPIMS makes 1.02 trillion naira. That's according to NNPC. And that story is on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. Now, don't open schools, viewing centers, and stadiums for now. Federal government wants state. That story is on page 2. We'll come to it. Nigeria recorded 717 rape incidents in five months. That's according to Adamu IG. And that story is on page 10. Wadame Falano gives Malami seven-day ultimatum to try alleged killer soldiers. Interesting. That story is also on page 9 of the Punch newspaper. Now to the right, you get the COVID update, the figures. We have passed the 16,000. We are over 16,000 now in Nigeria with uh, 5,003 uh, 49 recoveries, I believe, and 424 deaths so far. And of course, you see the global figures to your right. Let's look at the big story for the Punch newspaper. Obaseke says, the National Working Committee visits Asorok to counter APC governor's moves. Okay. Oshomole led committee presents certificates to Neil Edo governor. And governor will soon join us, won't get automatic tickets, state PDP says. Disqualification saga, APC has killed NGF since 2015, according to Wiki. Well, we have picture stories also there of, I um, believe it's some protests, or some walk, I uh, believe it's against rape. We have 717 cases reported between January and May. That's scary. And then we have Buhari, APC, and others mourn as Lagos Senator Oshinawa dies, unfortunately. That story is on page 34. God rest him. Nothing special about Amoteko, not a force. That's according to Ogun CP. The story is on page 10. Uh, Villa shooting, Aisha's ADC escort commander, riots police released. Again, on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. And then the multi-million Naira fraud rocks Lagos waste agency on page 11. Naira Mali is in the news. Federal government grants executive jet, sanctions airline, and the pilots. On pages four and five, uh, you find out what that's about. Emeritus Prof of Medicine, Akin Kube, passes on at ATCs. God rest him also. And that's all we have on the Punch newspaper. Balohan, can you hear me? Yeah, can I hear you? All right, let's hit the ground running. What's catching your attention this morning? Um, there, there was a mention about something on refinery. Yeah. That the refineries make money. Mm -hmm. 3.4 um, billion. 3.45 billion naira. Okay. Good news. Um, that, Bad that news. That's not a total picture. The right way to present such a story is to tell us they make this much money, they spend this much money. So you have a, a balanced view of the bottom line. Um, as it is, Though they have made money, but I can assure you that they have spent much more than they made. Those assets are losing money. They are money drained mm. for this for the government. And I, I'm just hoping that one day we'll have the right level of courage to do the right thing with those refineries. They are a drain. Every year they cost us billions. Mm. And we kept them alive. I can't justify it. I don't understand it. But then that is how government runs. This, this has been on for decades, Miwa. Right. I, I think it's important to mention that. Mm. To add to your thoughts, there will um, also hope for transparency in all of our sectors, I believe. Um, I mean, this, this one is even uh, obvious enough because every year they eventually will tell us how much those refineries spent. Mm. 
And we've seen that they are drained. So the question is that of a political will to do the right thing about something that is costing you billions of naira every year. Hmm. It, it, it's not brain surgery. That you, you can't keep that. You know, but that political will has not been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bonaho uh, says it's not brain surgery, not rocket science also, I believe. All right, let's proceed, yeah, to, <laughs> let's proceed to another national matter. What else have we got there? Uh, the the Obaseki matter is, mm. uh, is a very interesting one. Um, I am not sure that anything the, the party will arrive at will bring that ticket back to Obaseki. I, right. I think is a, as far as APC is concerned, it looks like a lost fight. Um, Obaseki unfortunately did not do his own uh, uh, tidying up well enough. And the, the, the party uh, is cashing in on that loophole to do what they had, had in mind to do with him anyway. Um, so it, it, it's quite unfortunate. I'm also not very confident that even if he goes to another platform, that he will be able to win that, uh, that election. So the, the question in the mind of uh, Edo people and Nigeria as a whole is that, is Obaseki being treated like this because he has not performed? All this jostle and game and scheming, is it about the people of Edo? Or is it just about politicians trying to grab powers and you know get the cookie jar closer to themselves? Those, those are the questions that should be running in our minds mm -hmm. uh, as citizens of, the, of this country. Right. And this thing has been in the news for quite a bit now. Let's see how all of this Hello. ends. <laughs> we also have a story. I think it's worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that the soldiers that kill those policemen are not on trial. Mm. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, maybe they shouldn't have told us all the story about how soldiers killed them. Maybe we, we don't know. Maybe it won't hurt us. But every citizen who, who, who heard the story, who heard the story of, of, of Wadube and how those soldiers gave orders. It's not just simply about the soldiers that did the actual killing, but also the one that gave the orders to the troop to kill. Yeah. All these guys are not on trial. And it's, it's, it's something we must ask the Attorney General. So I'm glad that somebody is raising it. Not that I'm very hopeful that much will happen, but at least Falano is raising it. Let's see where that leads us. If right. people have committed that kind of an act, even, even if the court is going to set them free, at least let's hear them. Let them go through the process and let the court be the one that says, okay, you're not guilty. It will be better that way than not having them stand trials at all. It's right. unacceptable. Thank God, uh, as you said there, that Falano is raising it. It almost looks like one of those things that, you know, get forgotten, so to speak, or just slips into unconsciousness of the nation. Now, let's take a... Did you see the story on the rape cases, Bolanhom? Between January and May, we have 717 reported cases. Of course, you would agree that there are others that, you know, never make it to the yeah, media. Hmm. I can, I, can, I can bet on that that there are several on report. Uh, but there are several dimensions to these things. Um, number one is how did we even get here? Right. We, the rape has been around forever. But the way we have treated it over the years, you know, uh, shaming the victims rather than helping them, you go to the police station, for example, to go and report a rape case, and the kind of question they will be asking the victim. It's such that nobody wants to even come and report those cases any longer. Then the high and mighty are also involved. Politicians are involved. Public office holders are involved. CEOs of companies are involved in this matter. Now, when once it goes into those high-profile sections, nothing hardly ever happened. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, I think the, the, the lockdown might have been what accentuated it. And then the, the increased consciousness. So people are more disposed to reporting what is going on. And, and, and you can imagine the number of cases we're talking about. Mm. What shall what should we do? Number one, we should ensure that people are punished. 
Any, any anything in the society that you want to discourage, you don't want people to continue to do it, then you must sanction the offenders. So everybody, no matter what your profile is, commissioner, uh, uh, politician, whoever you are, once you are found in this act, go through the prosecution. If you are found guilty, go to jail and, and, and serve the punishment. Number two is that we must do research as to why is this increasing. We have sociology department in our universities. We have agencies of government with responsibilities in this direction. So let's be able to use them to find out exactly what is going on so that we can also correct it as a society. Mm -hmm. Very important. Let's find out what is going on and correct it. All right. Um... Now, Romani is um, in the news. I don't know whether you're a fan, but, well, let's look at the important issues here. The federal government grants executive jet and sanctions airline. How come? How did all of this even happen? How, how did he make it to even travel would be the first question. Oh, well, um, a, a private jet was hired to pick a judge and bring him to Lagos. Hmm. Um, according to the, to the uh, uh, jet owners, when the, when the judge got to Lagos and they, got, they contacted the judge, they found out that the judge has already gone to Abuja. So they decided to help themselves. Essentially, that is what they did. So there were some people at the airport, uh, Naramali and the school. And um, the executive judge owner said, uh, there is a name, Babatunde Fashala, on that list. You know, so they assumed that that must be the serving federal minister. And they decided to take him. But here is the problem. The approval that the executive jet people had was a specific approval. So this specific approval had a name. Go to Lagos, you are approved to carry this particular judge and bring him to Abuja. And then you went and carried 12 or 13 people. And the judge himself is not one of those people. And you brought them to Abuja. Obviously, there have been some uh, uh, abuse of process of some, some abuses of the, of, of the process. And I'm glad that the aviation ministry is taking a step in that direction mm. by shutting down that, suspending uh, 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 that uh, airline. Right. Or the, the, yeah. that's, right. that, that's something. Then, then the, the fact that there is a concert in Abuja in the midst of COVID should also be a concern. Correct. Balahon. Correct. Are we serious at all? Are we responsible? that we want to organize a musical concert in a, in a mall in Abuja in the, in the midst of everything that is going on. You I know, think it's irresponsible. The, the more I think of it, Bolaho, I just feel like um, it seemed to me that Nigerians don't quite understand the seriousness of COVID-19, or some people really think they are immune to it. I hope we are treading the right path. I only hope so. <laughs> Let's hope you know, so. You know, you know what, Tamaka? Mm. I learned that some people who are even on admission in isolation centers are doubting the existence of COVID. No, let, let's not go. <laughs> we shall proceed, please. We can't go. <laughs> we shall proceed. <laughs> we shall proceed. Nigerians must know that COVID-19 is serious, uh, whatever we do, really. Let's take a look at the Nation newspaper, Bolahong. And um, it says, Labor Six Tax Court uh, uh, interest rate reduction and experts oppose demand. That story is there on the front page, uh, but inside page 25, I believe. Now, airline asked for flying Nairamali to Abuja. Flight approved for judge, just as Bolaho had explained, and shock as Lagos Senator Oshinawa dies at 64. Uh, God rest him, Buhari, Tinubu, and others mourn him. The story is on page seven for details. And then eminent scholar Professor Akin Kugbe also dies at 86. Uh, God rest him too. That story is on page seven. 799 in police night for rape, uh, says the IG. Uh, the other newspaper says 717. But, well, it's over 700. That's not good news anyways. It's on page 7. Government to Nigerians, battle against virus in your hands. And so for all those preparing to go to a concert, I hope they hear this. Now, people's attitude cause of rising positive cases, reopening of schools and viewing centers dangerous. Resident doctors on strike over unpaid allowances. 
all of this in front, on the front page of the nation uh, newspaper. Uh, federal government takes in, rakes in 1.6 billion to tackle virus and uh, why frontline health workers have not been paid by ASGF. We wonder if there's anything that will justify not paying salaries. That story is on the newspaper. And patients without symptoms can transmit virus, says the World Health Organization. Uh, the other day there was counter information. That's what it means, that asymptomatic cannot. Well, the World Health Organization is saying now that patients without symptoms, otherwise known as asymptomatic patients, can transmit COVID-19. Airlifting of stranded Nigerians to end next month. Uh, these are many more you can find from pages 6 and 31 of the Nation newspaper. Now let's take a look at uh, that paper, still on page 27. Mines, uh, mines dispute BUA urges respect for judgment. And then we have the daily updates of the COVID-19 uh, cases worldwide. We are now at 8 million plus. And in Nigeria, we are over 16,000. Now we have a picture story also uh, there. Um, if we can zoom in a bit, uh, there's a picture story there. Right, Obaseki's disqualification is right under that uh, final, says Oshomale. Wow, that story is on page 25. And then we have WK Clark back governor's uh, PDP, governor's PDP move, Edo PDP chair, no automatic ticket. And Oyo to reopen schools by June the 29th, a couple of weeks from now. Undo shots clinic and Oyetola extols Debisi's virtues on page 26. Bolahon, it's over to you. Um, I, I would like to discuss from the story about Oyo reopening schools mm -hmm. on June 29th. Um, I, I know that the governor is working with a team of uh, medics. I mean, thorough professional. I know uh, Professor Alonga is in that team and, and some other professionals. So obviously, he's getting advices from experts as well. Um, at the same time, I think uh, it needs to um, tread very carefully. Right. It needs to tread very carefully. And, and, and the reason is because we still don't know much. We know so much, but we still know so little hmm. about this virus. Yeah, and that's that is dangerous. why the situation in which WHO says something today, uh, other consultants come and say something else tomorrow, something in Italy today, another in America tomorrow. Hmm. We still do not know enough about this virus. So we must do tread very carefully. Now, uh, ordinarily, one would have said, well, since everybody is looking for who will bear the car, why let all your states be the control experiment? So let them let them open the school, let's see how it goes. But the problem here is that this control experiment could be costly because lives are involved. Right. These are not guinea pigs, these are not rats. You know, so we have to be very careful. Otherwise, if it boomerang, it will not be pleasant for the United States government. Mm -hmm. And you can also see yeah. that that's a scream, that a scream out there that says um, the battle uh, battle to contain uh, the virus is now in your hands. And I really, I don't know how else we're going to say this, because we say this in the media, we say it in the news, but it, seem, it just seemed to me there is something else that we are not hearing as Nigerians. Because even this morning when I was coming to work as early as 5 a.m., I just saw people moving around, no face mask, you know, the buses again are now cramped back. What is going on? What is going on? It's fortunate, Amaka, very unfortunate, because even the little uh, uh, compliance that we had a few weeks ago, we've forgotten all about it. Every day, we are lowering the standards. Mm -hmm. We are dropping our guards. It's quite unfortunate. You see, it's, it's, it's not even... Just a Nigerian matter. That's that's the sad part. Mm. Everybody is bombarded online every day from all over the world about people who are doubting COVID, people who are saying this, people who are saying that. So Nigerians are not just listening to what is going on in, in Nigeria. They are listening to and watching what is going on in America, in China, in Europe, in everywhere. 
-hmm. and is is a, is a cacophony of contradictory information all over the old place. Right. Well, I have a suggestion, actually. We're going to have the doctor who is in charge of the Luth Isolation Center sometime today. But my suggestion is that there's a clip from uh, Ghana, you know, that went viral, and that's uh, their own, uh, those in charge of their own NCDC, so, so to speak, the ones in charge of the disease control center, burying about five, uh, you know, dead bodies. And they brought the media to bring them to the graveyard and see where this burial is happening and how it's happening. And he was warning, the chief, uh, the, the man was warning Ghanaians to say, this thing is serious, you know, take COVID-19 seriously and take charge of your life. Why in why are we not seeing such images in Nigeria? We, we are not even allowed access to isolation center. We've, I mean, we in Plus TV Africa, we've even written emails to say, can we be allowed to do a coverage? Maybe, just maybe, if Nigerians see such things, maybe it will speak to us. I don't know, what do you think before we run to the next newspaper? There's a bit on the, on the morbid side. Um, but if that is what it takes to convince Nigerians, I have absolutely no objection to it. I think it's something worth exploiting because already the news is filled with even prominent Nigerians who have succumbed to COVID. Right. So why would we still not believe it? I mean, I listened to an interview, a journalist had interviewed uh, a survivor of COVID in Nigeria. And she said that while she was on admission, she had fellow people who were also on, in, the same, uh, in the same admission place who did not believe in COVID. Crazy. So, it, it is, so it what is are they doing amazing. there? <laughs> that, I mean, so what are they doing there if they are on admission for COVID-19 and don't believe COVID exists? So are, are people just literally but, but, chilling? The government to pick them. Uh, they were in the hospital, they fell ill, they got tested, they said they were positive, and then NCDC came to pick them and took them to the isolation center. So as far as they're concerned, maybe it was still malaria or whatever. The lady said it because she was an health professional. When, he felt, when she felt better, she had to go lecturing them and telling them this is for real. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, so it's really crazy. Whatever we can do to make people realize that this is not a joke, we need to do it. All right. Let's quickly go to business day, uh, Balaho, in the interest of time. And I'm, I'm afraid we might wrap with business day uh, because we just have a few more minutes to the next bulletin. And it says, Nigeria's fiscal headache goes from bad to worse as debt service could top 100% in the second quarter. Um, we also have there on business day, it looks like that's just about the big story there. Um, yeah, I think. Well, do you want to any intervention on that? Um, it's your area. Uh, well, I, 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 well, I wish to read to read the full story about debt service stopping hundred mm percent -hmm. because I don't know what that. Are they saying we have now borrowed enough such that the debt service alone will take up our entire budget? Mm -hmm. um, that is most unlikely. That is most unlikely. Either if if our entire budget goes to debt service, then we won't even pay salary. We won't do anything. Then the government packs up and everybody goes away. Oh it, 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 it's an extreme situation. It's not likely to happen. At the same time, I think the core message here is that we need to watch our indebtedness. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a confusing uh, uh, discussion with a lot of people when you bring out the fact that debt is not our problem, but it is revenue. Because we don't have the revenue, then our debt has become unsustainable. That is the main problem Nigeria has. And we have not been able to address that revenue problem. Therefore, we must be on top of our debt situation. We must ensure that we don't get into those levels where we will not even be able to meet the basic needs, like mm. paying people's salary. Right. All right, thank you so very much, Bolaho. I think that's all we are able to take in the interest of time. As always, it's good having you reviewing remotely, but we will bring you back post COVID 19 into the studio. Thank you very much, Bolaho, and have a great day ahead of you. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me.
All right, and that's how we wrap off the press this morning. Remember, it is it's the same time here on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 a.m., Monday to Friday. I am Amaka Okoye saying stay safe out there still. <laughs>